Now, hopefully you remember this image. Um, it was in color last time, but same same idea. We've got this overriding plate with these ramps. This is a thrust fault system. And the terminology here where we have a window. So the overriding plate eroded all the way down to, so that you can see the underlying plate. So this hanging wall has a window in it where you can see the foot wall. Here's the thrust trace. Again, the little triangle tabs are on the thrusted plate or uh, thrusted bed. So the arrow, the triangles are not pointing in the direction of motion. They're actually pointing opposite the direction of motion if that thrust trace is a straight line. But as you can see up here on the clipe, this trace, these triangles will go all the way around it, always pointing inward because this is a piece of that overlying bed that's been stranded and isolated by erosion. So this rock is the same as this rock over here on the right. This here is the underlying bedrock, same as in this window. And here we can see it in the cross section on the side of this block diagram. Now, easier than calling it the underlying bedrock and the overriding plate and the thrust plate and stuff like that, we have these two terms, a lockthon and a tochthon. They are odd words, and a lot of times they could be easily forgotten or mixed up, but I came up with an idea that hopefully will make it a little easier to remember which one is which. The autochthon is automatically there all the time because it's not moving. So the autochthon is automatically there. You know, that's the auto part of it. You might not see it if it's all covered by the alochthon, but the autochthon is automatically there no matter what. It's underneath or exposed as the case may be. So this brings us to a lochthonus, which is rock above the detachment. It's the stuff that moved. It's the stuff that rode up over something else. And a tochthonus is rock below the detachment. It didn't move. It was there all along. It was automatically there no matter what. So in this cross section here, we can see this a tochthonus rock. And it's all, you know, sure the arrow's pointing right there because this little part of the gray and white stripes didn't move. It got bent, it got folded, it got faulted slightly here, but this piece did not move. Neither did any of this uh, speckled sandstone or this white crystalline bedrock underneath. It was all there stationary. All to the left here, all of these different thrust faults and folds and stuff, all of this moved. It came from further left and moved to the right. Since it moved, it was detached. It is the alochthonous rock. So what would we call this? This big rock right here. This is, you know, well, simple answers. Oh, it's a mountain. But specifically, most importantly, it's a clipe. We pop back here. We see this little image here. This rock standing up above everything else. Different kind of rock because it's part of this overriding sheet. Now, in the actual photograph, we can say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You know, the tree line stops there. It's different. It's less, you know, weathered than this stuff down here, which has weathered into soil formation. Up here, 
all the soil's gone, exposed rock that hasn't weathered into soil, so the trees stop there. We've got another one back here in the left hand corner. So that brings us up to thrust systems. A thrust system is simply a family of related thrusts that ramp up from a single detachment fault. So a thrust system is a bunch of thrust faults that are all related. They started to form together. There are two different end members suggesting that you know, an ember kit fan or a duplex in its purest form are the extreme cases, but reality suggests we have a mix of the two a lot of the time. That's what we mean by end members. So these are the two textbook cases, the two perfect examples of what get mixed together to form all the real cases. So the first one, the imbricate fan, starts off with a detachment fault starts ramping up and the fault does not reach the surface so you notice the dark line here is the fault and it ramps up but this dotted line here there is just folding there isn't actual displacement and so to get the rock to accommodate the fact that the fault does not reach the surface it has to fold sharply as that happens it's very possible for new detachment and a new ramp to start forming because that will be easier this happens because this rock underneath is more brittle than the rock above it this is based on rock types, so we have something more plastic overlaying something more brittle. So once we have fractured and faulted the brittle rock and the plastic rock starts bending, there's a lot of weight here, this one can stop sliding and cause a new one to start sliding and fracturing. And so this incipient ramp meaning the upcoming, it's going to fracture, it's going to fault, becomes the new current one. And then we have a new incipient ramp where the stresses are building up and the cracks are starting to form. And so this is time one, we have one lobe of a fan. Time two, we have a second lobe. By time three, we have a third lobe. And they don't draw here, but there were to be another incipient ramp forming if the compressive stress continues. And you can see how we have this kind of lobed formation with a bunch of small-ish, you know, small being a relative term here, ramp faults, or fault ramps rather, that do not reach all the way to the surface. And this is why we call it an imbricate fan, because all these lobes kind of create this fan structure in cross-section. A duplex, on the other hand, um, if we jump down to time three, almost looks braided. The way this happens is the ramp that forms when you have the thrust sheet, the thrust um, has complete detachment and this glide horizon so it can keep gliding it doesn't bend as much so we're not getting a fan shape and you know so we have this first ramp and in this case the terminology horse is different than horst in a horst and graben this is actually spelled just like the animal there's no t in it and it is the part of the um, structure that is on the uprighting ramp but isn't the top layer. It's part of this underlying bed that gets lifted up due to going up the future, you know, up the next ramp. 
and you can see you know the first one the second one which is a horse this next one you can see down in time two is the second horse now this is the upcoming one that becomes the third horse and this gives this braided look and this could continue for as long as there is compressive stress you can get more and more of these layers more and more horses and this is a duplex system this can happen like this near the surface this can also happen at depth where you have detachment um, you have this glide horizon and if there is detachment and gliding along the top of this as well you can get this kind of duplex system happening underground